pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen Chu here. Jim Hewitt. James Hewitt. Here. David Bork. Here. Ed Blaze. Here. Melinda Torrance. Here. And Ruby Karen's absent. Okay, first, so we're going to amend the agenda. My understanding is the second appeal, appeal number 2660, has been tabled to next month. Okay, so that is all. And we're going to approve the minutes from the last two meetings, so the March 13th, 2019, and the April 10th, 2019 minute, um, minutes from those two meetings. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes from those meetings? Yes. yes. Should we vote on them separately, maybe? Because I feel like we have different attendance. So first, I, um, does anyone have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 13th, 2019 meeting? I'll move to approve since that was there. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Abstain. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the April 10th, 2019 meeting? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Yes. Um, <laughs> due to attendance, uh, Mr. Blaze will be a voting member tonight in our meeting. Next, we have the approval of the draft written decisions. First, we have the March 13th meeting and the minutes from the Central Power Company's appeal. Did everyone get a chance to review the written decision for the CMP? Yes. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, changes? No. no. I do not have any changes. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve the March 13th written decision for Central Main Power. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. okay, now we have the written decision from the State Manufactured Homes Appeal for the 86 U.S. Route 1. Did everyone get a chance to review the finding of facts and draft for that? I reviewed it. So did I. Okay. Anyone have any questions, concerns, or changes, or a motion to approve? Motion to approve uh, April 10th, 2019, appeal number 2658. Nope, no, we're doing the state manufacturing oh, home state right now. State manufacturing home, yep. we're done. Five, seven. That's fine. I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay. That was the April meeting, right? Yes, yep, this is the state manufactured homes draft decision. I wasn't there, so I can't. I, I will second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor? I, I read and uh, kept up on findings of fact that were available for all the April decisions. Yep. And then we have approval of appeal number 2658, which is the Pine Point Grill appeal. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone got a chance to see the submission from the applicant and the new owner that included the deed, which we asked them to produce. Yes. So, uh, so moved. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Okay. So we have one appeal tonight, which is appeal number... Yeah, I'll oh, sit down flat. Would, would use yeah. as a handout if you wish. Okay. But if you if Actually, you need room to fun. spread things out, then that's perfectly fine to do yeah. it here. Then I will. I'm gonna use all the space. Yeah. No problem. Props. Okay. So we have we have one appeal tonight, which is appeal number two six five nine, a special exception permit application by Lee Kellis for the property at two four three Pine Point Road. Uh, first, I'm going to ask Mr. Longstaff to please give us. 
Uh, sure. So um, you have you have a home occupation special exception application. Um, we've dealt with these before, as you know. The special exception uses are uses that would not normally be permitted in a district unless they meet certain uh, standards or criteria. And uh, home occupations are just one of, of a list of many special exception uses in the R2 zone. Uh, Ms. Kellis is here uh, to propose her home occupation, um, which the activity is, as I understand it, to sell art that's created by, uh, I believe, her husband, homemade jewelry, and I'm not sure who in the family creates the home, homemade jewelry, but uh, she'll, uh, she'll explain that, I'm sure, uh, and a few food items that are made at the, at the home. Um, keep in mind that the, you know, most of this is retail, and so therefore it's limited to 400 square feet of retail space uh, for products that are either produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. And, Cooking is certainly processing. Um, I, I would consider brewing processing. Uh, produced or assembled artwork is produced or, or assembled. So I believe the activity meets that requirement. The space we're still not 100% clear on, but I think Ms. Ms. Kellis is going to explain that to us as well. And then, of course, the board is going to review all of the special exception standards uh, in Section 4I, and then also uh, address all of the home occupation standards that are in section 9b I believe it is uh, for home occupations and uh, I think with that we'll let Ms. Kellis present her project do I present it or do you ask questions and then I answer them um, you can give us an overview of yes the first and most important question is which building am I using <laughs> and I have made a final decision to use the smallest building on the property so there is a home that I am currently living in there is a small cottage that is currently serving as a garage, and then there is a small shack that looks like it used to be a, a lobster shack or a vending shack of some sort, which is the 192 square feet. It says shed, and it has some doors that open up, and it looks like an old school lobster shack, and that's what I'm going to use. Uh, so it meets the requirements to be half the size of the 400 max, so it's less than 192. And the proposed items will be actually my art. My husband's too busy to make art, so I'm doing my own. And sort of um, inspirational messages, the focus being on uh, art and jewelry, which I also make. So I make both of these things. And then I wrote a book, and I'm going to be selling my book. It's pertaining to donuts and life. Um, and then iced coffee, so there'll be no brewing. It will be no hot coffee. It will be cold brew, which we do um, at my other business, so I know how to do that. And it requires uh, refrigeration, but it's made a couple hours, uh, 24 hours before, and so then we will sell that. And then some minimal bakery items for which I am applying with uh, the Department of Agriculture and a license here in this town of Scarborough to use my home kitchen. Um, I have spoken extensively with Rhonda Stone. I don't know if anyone knows Rhonda Stone. She's the Department of Agriculture guru. And she said that the home occupation license is an easy one in this situation. I have a two-bay sink and a brand new kitchen and muffins can't kill anybody. So she said that that's a $20 license and that it should satisfy easily. Um, and I want to keep it extremely simple. I'm not planning to do an extensive line of baked goods, the focus being on the art, jewelry, and other items. Um, in the coffee. Uh, the muffins will definitely be a part of it, but made in the home, sold in the shack, and um, I don't want to be overwhelmed with, with baked goods. Uh, this is mainly, should I keep going? <laughs> a project to give my three teenagers an opportunity to understand how to run a business and to learn the ropes and to deal with people and to create something positive in our little neighborhood. I think it's going to be very cute and good energy and um, give the teens something to do and interact with the neighbors and make a positive little spot for people on their way to the beach in the morning. Um, I think before we jump into the questions and criteria, I want to understand the square footage a little bit more. Um, I understand that you're going to use the 192 square feet to sell the stock 
and all the things that you just lined out. Um, but we need to understand where you're going to be cooking the muffins and making the jewelry and doing the art and things like that. Well, jewelry and art would be in my home. Muffins would be in the home as well. So the house is the 1497, and that's where I will get the kitchen licensed through the Department of Agriculture. And she said I have met, I have the requirements met to satisfy her licensing approval. Um, and it, so is jewelry and art made in the home. Is there any other question about that? As if, because I know it can't wholesale someone else's jewelry, obviously. So I'll be making my own stuff right. in my house. Is um, that satisfactory? Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn to Mr. Longstaff because I know there are square foot requirements. Um, and I don't know if it's into, like, if you take the square footage of the kitchen, if that's considered part of the home business because that's where she's manufacturing it and where she's doing the jewelry and things like that. The, uh, the regulations are not clear on whether you can have either or or both an ex a, a, a detached structure or if it all has to be in the home. You, you are allowed to do business or do things in a detached structure. That's limited to a 1,000 square feet. Retail... In other words, if, if you were creating pottery in, in the shed, you, you would be allowed to have a thousand square feet of detached structure to do your home occupation. If you're going to sell the pottery, that portion of that structure is limited to 400 square feet. If you're operating out of your house entirely, the house is limited, or that space is limited to 20% of the living space in the house. And that does not include So it's just living space. So I'm going to assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you're using your kitchen primarily in the house and in, in maybe some other room to do the artwork in. I'm not sure. Well, the, the, the art and the jewelry is flexible. It takes very little space, and I have three buildings. Mm -hmm. So I might use the cottage to have a okay. little table to make art or jewelry. Um, it's literally like... What the board needs to understand is what what is the space in your house that you're going to be using to produce what you're going to be selling in the shed? Mostly probably the muffins. So that would be in the kitchen. Do you have any idea what your um, kitchen area is? Probably 15 square feet by 15 square feet, but I didn't measure that, so I'm not sure. That's I'm horrible with amounts, but I'm thinking that's probably an that's average size kitchen. kitchen. That's a big kitchen. Maybe 12 by 12? Huge. Kind of very average. And, and let me see if I can help with that. Are you using a standard convection oven to cook the muffins? Um, it is not convection. It is conventional. Conventional, okay. But it's, it's, it's pretty much unknown for square footage, which is typically... Three by three, four by four? A regular home-size oven? Yeah, so it's a home-size oven. Yes. Which is, then that would be about a ton. It's not much. And a prep table... And the sinks, and that's about it. Yep. But those those yeah. things are utilized for other purposes, though, too, right? Correct. Because some of you will be living in that building. Okay. Who, who will be the residents of that building? Um, myself, my fiance, my daughter, and one of his sons. Okay. All right. And those would be the only people, you, it'll be the children, right, operating the business. Me and one of them probably every day. Right. So I, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a combination kitchen bed for the business as well as for personal use. So I, I think it's kind of hard, very difficult to say, well, how much of it is for this or that? It's, I don't know how you separate that. Um, what, would I, what is the question? 20% of That's the right. total space being delegated to That's this yes, endeavor? Uh, uh, so, so if I took 20% of the 1497 square feet of your your house, is that just the footprint, or is that all floors? I would say that's for two floors. Two floors, okay. So 20% of that is, is 299 square feet. Um, and does somebody want to check my math? No, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> then don't don't do the. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm just kidding. Um, so 299 square feet is 20% yeah, of the house. Sense. And your sh shed is 192 square feet. And, and so your kitchen 
you, you've got over a over 100 square feet left over in the balance because you're almost 300 square feet minus minus 192, right? So there's about 100 square feet. 100 square feet is like a 10 by 10 area. Yeah. Just to do simple math, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you know they're just baking goods. They're taking them out of the oven and they're putting them on the counter yeah. and stuff. I don't think they're probably utilizing more than 100 square feet of that yeah. that house. I, I'm I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's up to the board to determine if that. Well, and if, just to make sure that I, I understand too correctly, you said that the 400 square feet is about the retail space for the for, for right. that's used, right? So that's those the that's the only right. space that a customer would be. So she's under the 400 if she's using the shed yep. for the 192. And what I'm suggesting is because the ordinance is not clear on whether you you can have both the outside building mm -hmm. and utilize some space in the house. I think it makes sense to be able to do both, but Absolutely. I think then we have to use one or the other, and so the 20% is the number I would suggest the board use, and, yep. and so therefore, 192 is under 299, and the balance of that would be whatever's the, used in the kitchen. I think the major part of the activity is taking place in the shed anyway, so I would submit to the board that I believe she meets the requirements for space. Thank you. I, I, I'm just submitting that to the board. It's your decision, uh, Madam Chair. It's before the board's decision. Into, yes, before we, before we get into the specific criteria, <clears throat> where would the food be consumed? On premises or off premises? Um, people would theoretically sit on the grass by the shed or take it to the beach. So they, they could put, do either then, in other words. Yes. All right, is there requirements? Uh, this, this gets into split in here now. The restaurant, is yeah. there a requirement as far as indoor versus outdoor uh, display of whatever the merchandise is being sold, the consumption of? I mean, just where do you, well, how do you draw that line? I guess I would answer that. When you go to Walmart, are you able to leave the door of Walmart and jump immediately into your car without going outside? No. If you have a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, well, here's your kid. I, yeah. I'm not being facetious. I'm just saying, you know, within reason, let's 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 apply some reason to, yeah. to it. Okay. All right. My concern, my primary concern is, right, there's really no space inside it. It's, it's a very very small. No space. one will be coming into the shed. It is a small yeah. little box. Right. And you would have the but, and, but there are no tables or chairs nope. or in the retail space. Not at all. Okay. And you're not going to provide any kind of picnic tables or any, or outside tables at all. Or I plan to. Well, here's where the problem That's is. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's where the problem is. Or so, I won't. So the, so the activity has to be conducted entirely within the dwelling or within a building accessory to the dwelling. Milling around outside is not going to It's not gonna go. Um, so there has to be some accommodation for the activity to take place inside a building. Um, the use is not extended. I, I, what I was thinking Dave's mm. questioning was getting to is yeah. if somebody's wandering around the property or going to their car and eating a muffin, are they displaying, is that an outside display of the product? But No, I, I, but my, it, my concern you're right. is you people know, are milling around. Where are they going to so then I would the not product. provide them an opportunity to mill around. I didn't understand yeah. that, but now I do. Yeah. Literally what it leads to is this. If it's going to tie in with the uh, problem with potential problem for how many cars will be parked around you know, this facility at a time if people are eating in their cars or whatever. Why don't we, we have a lot of criteria to go through. Yeah, yeah, and there is do. a lot. We have two sections. Yeah, but two I, I want to at least get those general. But that makes out. sense, and I can That's understand that. So ver therefore, I would not provide an opportunity for people to linger or mill. Thank you. Well, we can, yeah, we can go into further detail on all that. Right. But I so think th that's good. This is all good lead in. Then. It's like a takeout. Just grab a muffin and go. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it should be. Door. Go. More expensive things. <laughs> sort of like scratch making in South Florida. Or like an ice cream stand where yeah. plenty of people can sit on curbs, but in this situation I would be yeah. <clears throat> have the experience, grab coffee, and move on. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're going to dive into your application here. So if you want to just actually, I don't know if you have it in front of you, you can just read in the answers that you provided while I go through each one, okay? I didn't because I knew you had them in front of you, so I figured you'd be reading them. So 
I'm I reading back my, my answers. Yep, so we're going to go into the, we're going to go through the standards for a special exception. Um, so A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, right. The use of the cottage, which substitute shed for that because I've decided to go for the 192 spot. Well, so art, homemade jewelry, muffins, and iced coffee. This will not create hazards for the neighborhood, such as sewage or emissions. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. There is ample parking at the property. There are four spots in addition to my personal spot in my, at my house. Additionally, there is a residence directly across the street, which I have a photo of, uh, that has offered, they are, vacate their property for the entire summer, and they have offered us their two to three spots right at their house, which is just a stone's throw from, it's across the street. Um, What's the address on that property? Um, they are facing, I'm on, uh, I don't know the address of their property. So my, is it my on Jasper? their front door is on route, um, Pine Point Road. This is Jasper and this is where the, the shack is right in front of it. Oh, okay. So those said it's available. So that would be seven spots between me and them. But that would also uh, include your personal car. Uh, what about your in addition to my car. Sorry. And then on the other side of our house, we have additional parking for our personal use. Okay. Um, does that sum that up? Okay. I'll see, the proposed use will not create a public safety problem, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, but will require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. The proposed business concept will not create public safety problems. The building will be locked with no valuables left in it. There will be no cooking as to not create any fire hazard. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supply. There is no risk of erosion. If gravel were ever needed to counteract erosion, it would not end up in the storm drain system. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, and proximity to other structures and density of development. The shed, rather than cottage, will be visually appealing and well landscaped, as my fiance is, that's what he does for a living. It will enhance the neighborhood with good positive energy and activity. It will, was last granted special exception as an art studio in 1998. F is if it's located in the shoreland zone. That's my understanding it is not. That's my understanding as well. He, the applicant, has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. The applicant, which is me, is the owner of the buildings, and the deed is attached. And is this currently your primary residence? Currently, yes. the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. I do have the ability to correct necessary changes if a safety issue were to arise. Yes. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. The intention is to operate 8 a.m. to noon, five to seven days a week. The, we will not generate any noise during these hours and certainly not before 8 a.m. Hours of operation may depend on weather. Stormy weather could potentially result in closing for the day. I also would like to add that I'm flexible on hours and days. If for any reason 8 a.m. is too early for the neighborhood, I would push it to 9. And if 12 impacts beach traffic too much, I would reduce hours to 11 to try to get between uh, beach activity. So if it needs to be 8 to 11, I would be open to doing that as well as to not add extra activity to the neighborhood, which will already be fairly busy. Right. 
So pre-beach traffic is kind of my intention. Right. Do you plan on being open year-round? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no. This is a summer project. Okay. And June through September. That's a great question. Now I have enough to do otherwise, <laughs> and this is a, a teen you summer do this project. Every year? Probably not. Um, I'm not sure how many years, one or two, but it, it's 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 kind of a this year fun project while the teens are still around and interested. And you'll be off to college by then. It's yeah, it's going fast. So. So I say one of the primary purposes of this is for the kids to sort of. Experience Absolutely. In front of themselves, learn something. Okay. Totally. Cool. Have you developed any kind of projected um, sales volumes for this? No. Yeah, I've set some goals. Okay. Most of the income I'm hoping is coming from art because that'll be the higher ticket items. Right. Not, not not dollar so much as uh, let's say um, number of uh, transactions per day, average number of transactions per day. Yeah. Peak uh, per day on you know the highest it could possibly. What's, your, what's the range you're looking at, average to peak transactions? It's hard to say because you don't know, and I know in my own business, every location is so different. Oh, yeah. Some places do a single item, some do a dozen. So it's really, really, really varies. I can only throw out numbers. I'm thinking 50 transactions a day. Okay. That's sort of my, my goal. And I don't need it to be excessively busy. I don't want it to be chaotic. I want it to be manageable and actually that's part of the reason I decided to use the shed it's smaller and it's behind the scenes a little bit so it's not right on the road which I think will keep it manageable and, and a little bit slightly off the beaten path which I think will be beneficial in the long run what are you going to call the business the shack of the 50 transactions a day how many would be food I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of iced coffee and I'm projecting 30 to 40 a day. Again, it's it's a wild wild guess. So you you're really not planning on selling anything other than food. No. I mean the the art stuff and the jewelry that's just there because people are going to be coming by and hopefully I would like to do sell. about 10, you know, if I just had to pick numbers and dream a couple 10 art things a day, 30 iced coffees, 3 dozen muffins. That's those are my numbers in my head. I, like I said, I don't want to be standing out there all you summer. Have a sign? <laughs> if I can. And what's the sign going to say? The shack, art, jewelry, coffee. I'm assuming I can put something out on the road somewhere so people know we're there. I'm, you'll tell me if I can or can't. <laughs> That's one of the criteria that we'll go through. Um, I know this neighborhood has kind of been through a lot of changes in the last 10 years, the development and everything. And are, you're, you're new to the neighborhood, correct? So have you, have you spoken to the neighbors and kind of gotten feedback? I put a letter like in everybody's mailbox yeah. and um, proposed that anyone who would like to speak to me, please call me, text me, email me, or stop over. And I had, of about 10 of my surrounding neighbors, the one closest to me is the one who's gone all summer. There are very few that actually are in within close proximity because we have a pretty big yard and the tennis courts take up right. half of the rest of our adjacent property. I had the people across Pine Point come over and say their concern was that it would impact traffic. And I said, well, in, in parking, but there's no parking in that front of, of between my house and theirs, and I explained that to them. I also explained that it's going to be pre-beach hours, which that I think is significant because it's not going to be all day on the heat of summer from 12 to 2. That's just not happening when everybody's coming and going. So they were at ease with that explanation that it's going to be pre-beach hours, their parking is not even going to see their house, and they get free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, sort of. Um, but they were, again, their mind was at ease. Nobody else took me up on proposing questions or concerns, and like I said, I put a, a letter to everybody yep. and free donut cards. So nice. they had reason to connect and there were no other concerns, which was encouraging. Okay. I don't know if the board has any other questions before we dive into the other um, criteria that we're going to go through, which is the performance standards for a home occupation. Um, does the board have any questions for the questions? No, my questions yeah. and comments will wait until probably we get to the, mm -hmm. uh, yep. when we yeah. start going through item by item. Okay. 
I, I do have a question on the form of candidates. Have you read through Section 9, those questions, the performance standards? Because I noticed you didn't address those in your submission to the board. Um, Are you aware of what Section 9 is? No. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I think that's important that as we go through this. Was that something that we discussed, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Manager, yeah we, we did discuss that when you were in my office. That section 9 stuff doesn't appear in the application, so you kind of have to have those responses ready. Oh. It doesn't have to necessarily be written down, but you just need to be yeah. familiar with it. So it's more of a conversation. Okay. Yeah. So I'll read this for you. So it says, in the zoning districts where home occupation is allowed as a special exception, the Board of Appeals may issue special exception approval for the establishment of a home occupation. In addition to meeting the standards for the special exceptions, which we just went through, all home, all home occupations must adhere to the following standards. So we have standards 1 through 12 that we're going to go through. So number 1, the occupation or profession shall be carried out wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory there too. And that's what we discussed, that the, the art and jewelry would be made in the main home as a backup um, possibility, there's the cottage next door. Does that answer that question? The muffins, of course, would be made in the kitchen. Okay. Does that answer the question, or unless you need more clarity? That's where the money transfer will happen. I thought I heard you say earlier that you might make some of the art in the shed as well. But maybe I what I was saying was that if I'm understanding the square footage requirements, my intent, my my intention or desire would be to make jewelry in my home because again, it takes about six square feet to do so. If that were somehow excessively surpassing my limitations, I would use which is that third structure that's available. Which doesn't sound like I need to. It sounds like I can make the jewelry and the uh, art at the table in my house. I'll, I'll leave it back to the board to We will discuss, discuss. it. We will discuss it. <laughs> I just wanted to get the question yep. asked. Yep. <laughs> um, two, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Uh, Correct. Oh, the main okay. purpose of the house yeah. is to live. On speaker so we can all hear. So the, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the primary service of the area is, is the residence itself. And the big house. Yeah, and this home occupation is secondary to, say, the purpose of the plot, which is you're living on it. Absolutely, yes. Number three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. That is correct and understood, yes. Yeah, my understanding was that it's all family, your daughters and you. In addition husband. to the one person, which Brian explained in our conversation, who is not living in the house, if I need somebody, that is acceptable. I get right. that. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12, sign regulation subsection E. Yep. Yes, and so I will uh, educate myself on that, which means a sign is allowed, but I have to find out more. <laughs> certain, yeah. certain dimensions that are yep. defined there. You, you, it's clear. You, you'd be uh, applying for the sign anyway with the sign permit application. And I do that for the town of Scarborough. Yes. Like a sidewalk sign kind of thing? Like on um, the ground? Pro probably not a sidewalk sign. We'll, again, we'll, we'll discuss it. it oh. Okay. It'll just just understand that there are there's an application process and some standards mm -hmm. that you'll need to. Understood. Okay. okay, number five. There
there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of a home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. No exterior display of retail items. Um, so I think maybe it might be a good time to maybe further understand how you're using the shed. And so is everything going to be inside that one shed so people will come in and get the coffee and then you'll have the art and everything up in, within so it? So this is a photo of the shed. Uh -huh. It currently has the covers on all the windows, but it's ready to go. It's clean and it's uh, the structure is sound. So those, those gray... Covers. Shutters, yeah. Shutters, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Flip, flip up mm -hmm. so people can stand there, and then there's a counter and then shelving in the back. It's, like I said, it's pretty clean and well-structured and so turnkey. They'd be displayed inside the So shed. everything, people at the counter and then maybe like a little wall of art and jewelry, yes. Cool. Lots of Christmas lights. Wait a are, are people going to be standing outside looking in? So they'll stand here. We've got a little garden area. Um, but yep. a little impediment to them standing, so we'll move things around a little bit. But yes, the, these will come up and they'll grab their goods and be on their way. But that's not inside. Well, they, they can't outside. be inside, right? That's for us. It's outside. Customers can go inside, but the, your materials cannot be outside. And that's basically the restriction. Is that the activity has to take place, read the criteria one again, was it? Shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. So outside sales, and I guess it depends on the, how the board wants to interpret that. What I interpret that is you, you're fixing up lawnmowers and selling them and you have them all displayed outside on the lawn and people walk up and you do your business, it, that would not be allowed. So I don't understand how that would work. So if the shed is small. Well, then the shed may need to be enlarged. <laughs> it, it, I, I, it's up to the board to determine whether walking up to a walk-up window, yeah. buying, purchasing right. the goods from inside the shed and then walking back to the car. I, I, I'm, I'm not the judge and jury here, but that's up to the board to decide. I don't see that as being a super major issue. It's not like the goods are being laid out on tables out in the yard where people are, like a yard sale, milling around. Right. That would be sort of a no-no there, definitely a no-no there. I'm not sure. I've not had the experience of, of somebody applying for like a takeout window set up where the person's standing outside, but the goods that are being sold are inside. Well, it's I'm a little hard really to sure. understand, but so... The person standing here, what, this is becomes a counter, right? Yeah. So they would be standing here. So their body is outside window. the wall, yeah. but they're touching the things right. on the counter, and I'm standing on the other to side. To me, it's like any other takeout. You go it's to like an ice cream shack or something, yeah, wherever, or, or lobster shack. Or whatever. Yeah. And it's I, like that. Nobody goes into the shack generally right. because yeah, that's where the people are taking the money and doing the business. So the only question I would have then is just how do you display the art? So, that so the, say I'm standing here inside. Uh -huh. This thing is up, so that you're, this person is looking at me, and I have a little wall right behind me. Right art. behind you, you've got the art, okay. Close enough, they can see it. And, oh, let me see that. And bring it over to yeah, it. like it's all within yeah. a small a proximity. Yes. Okay. Got it. To, to me, that makes total sense. You know, it's strictly a takeout. Well, that's how it was built, so it's kind of yeah. the way that that's exactly that's probably that's always been used. That's what it's designed for, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number six. No nuisance shall be generated including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, or glare. Definitely nothing offensive. Um, definitely no excessive noise, and definitely not early hours. Seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. With the seven uh, available spots and the potential to, to uh, create egress, um, I have a large property with a fiance who does all the excavation and gravel and, oh, perfect, yeah. <coughs> all 
right, so where would so you, what would you do as far as creating parking? Or, you know, so you've got the three to four ingress. spots between the white truck and 243. Yeah. And then if you move the screen down or look down a little bit, that's the spots across the street that are available. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you also can see two spots along the road would be additional two spots. Uh, Is there any public parking available on either street? And then there's the tennis courts, which I don't know if I should talk about, but I don't know if those help behind if you go up. Uh, there's that, which is another probably 20 Who spots. That property? It's the town of Scarborough, I believe which I'm not offering that to people, and I'm certainly not suggesting that anybody use that, but I probably will see over the course of the summer how available it is in the hours from 8 to 11. It may, um, there might be 10 spots over there that are not used. There's only two tennis courts, so I don't know how many cars would ne would be needed for tennis anyway. Ryan, but do you know of any restrictions on that parking spot? Well, obviously the town would not make its parking lot available to someone to use for their business opportunity. On the other hand, if somebody comes to play tennis and wants to walk, I don't know if there's a fence in between or if there's any way to walk from the, mm -hmm. there must be, otherwise you wouldn't be at it. If they were playing tennis and saw that there was iced coffee and muffins and wanted to walk to right. the property, there would be no prohibition against that, obviously. Yeah, that's what I meant. No, the town would not offer up town facilities for another business to. No, yeah, nor will apartment. I offer it, but it's just yeah. interesting that it happens to be there. Okay. But in addition to the up to eight other spots, I think that might okay. be sufficient. Oh boy. <laughs> Are we on the break? Who's losing hair? Oh wow. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> did we just talk about parking? Yes. We, so we just did, in addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee in the vehicle of the maximum number of users or customers to home occupation may attract during the peak operating hours. We have no employees with vehicles. Two spots are required for the dwelling. And right. between, you can That's see the deck, driveway. there's That's a very right. long driveway that has uh, two spots that would be um, available and or the other side of the house, which over on the lawn we've used for our personal vehicles as we're renovating the house, which would probably be ideal for my vehicle or my fiance's vehicle on the other side. So your proposed parking is right in front of the shed there, right next to the white truck? Correct. In addition to the two street spots and across the street, which I mentioned. Okay. You know, I'm thinking about the projected uh, Transaction count 50 to 70 yeah. spread out over four hours. Uh, to me, that's you know, 12 to about 15, you know, 20 per hour. To me, that's not a real big number, but strictly takeout. If people were staying in their cars and you know, for an extended period of time, uh, I don't know if that's, and you know, obviously, you said you wouldn't allow loitering or people, you know, just hanging out. I don't expect people to sit in their cars. That doesn't sound very desirable. I think right. if people are on that road, they're probably heading somewhere more beautiful. And, and when I go to get takeout, I don't sit in my car. I get in my car and go, usually. So I see your point, but I, I'm, I don't feel like that's a it's, concern. It's really a, uh, just considering all possibilities here. Uh, and the other point you made earlier about uh, bad weather, uh, it's been my experience that Bad weather when you're near a beach actually drives business to retail. It's just the opposite. Because I definitely know that, um, but I may not open. <laughs> yeah. No, I know in certain situations, one of some of our lo locations thrive in bad weather; others die yeah. in bad weather. Yeah, so it really depends on the de the situation in the neighborhood. But I yeah. understand. If you can't yes. go to the beach; they're going to go shopping. Definitely true. However, I'm just wondering in this situation mm -hmm. if because it's a beach route, if it would de derail business that day. I see your point, a lot of people do come to shops, tourists, when they need something to do, yeah. if the weather's bad. How much walk-up traffic do you expect? No cars walking? Probably none. Although we would love to offer, like we do at my shops, um, 
incentive for biking to reduce traffic, and so we do free donuts for anyone who rides their bike to our shop, and we've done that for years, and it really is, works well. And I'm thinking of doing the same thing here, and also, on another note, really incentivizing environmentalism, which is bring your own cup, not throwing things away, no plastic. No plastic. My daughter is obsessed, and that's all she talks about, so we want to do lots of positive incentives for people. But the biking thing is really important for the, the parking and for the neighborhood. Um, I might expand on that concept now that you mentioned that. Like a refill with a bike, biking arrival versus cars. Bring your own thing and ride a bike and you get a free iced coffee. <laughs> All right, so number nine, the home occupation may utilize A, not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided for the purposes of this calculation. Unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. B, unfinished attic and basement spaces. And C, spaces within an accessory unit totaling no more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. I think we did the math. About 300 ma square feet is would be about 20% of 1497, and that would be more than enough for these purposes, including the retail of 192. And the home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. A, the total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be wholly enclosed within a building. And B, the sale of the products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. And C, food caught or harvest off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by the one employee permitted under paragraph above. So the total area devoted to the retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building. So that's the 192. Fully enclosed, but yet the window's open. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. But yes, it is a structure with walls. Products and articles are going to be produced, assembled, or processed on the premises? Yes. Okay. Now, my understanding was that the coffee will not be made on the premises. It will be made on the premises, right? It has, where else would it be? I mean, in the shed or in the house. Is that considered the premises? It's, it's, a, it's a bucket <coughs> with a mm -hmm. bag with hot water. Oh, okay. If, you, if you've ever made cold the, brewing, the cold brew iced coffee is the same as um, sun tea. Mm -hmm. Now I guess I'm confused because earlier this evening I felt like you had said that you were going to be just doing iced coffee from your other business and bringing it there. No, I was saying that we do it at my other business, but no, there's no tie-in between products sold at one place and others. So I'm saying it's the same uh, concept or system, which is just a bucket with coffee and water made for this business on so not transporting it between built between across town, no. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so is this in the kitchen where you're doing the muffins as well? Or would that be in the shack or within one of those? It would yes. The bucket would live somewhere between either the shed or the house. Okay. Uh, number eleven is a fisherman, lobsterman, or shellfish harvester, which I do not believe you are. No. And number 12 applies to motor vehicle repairs and motor vehicle towing businesses, which I do not believe you are. Good, no. Um, so I don't know if the board has any questions for the applicant at this time in regards to the home occupation standards before we open it up to the public. I think I have, I have one question yes. just in thinking about, you know, taking away the copy, you know, the Obviously, there's going to be some kind of paper or plastic cup or something like that. You know, uh, what's your proposal for handling trash? Composting. So the only thing I use in my other business is compostable plastic. And I've already been thinking thoroughly about this because a lot of times separating and actually getting compostable cups into a compost doesn't happen. So we have to, it's a, it's a big challenge for everybody. However, in this situation, I would offer compostable cups and a composting bucket and really make it easy for people when they're finished to remove the liquid, put it in the compost, and then I will compost things. Like I said, my 15-year-old daughter is 
very stringent on environmental standards, as am I, if that answers your question. Um, but I can expand on that, too. So the second piece of that question would be that that... Trash. So, right, so that, that kind of handles the trash piece, but now you've opened up another set of issues of you've got people that are going to be lingering around to finish their coffee if they're doing it there on the Yeah, or we or could just encourage people and say, this is a compostable cup. Do the right thing with it. I can't control what they do in any situation. Mm -hmm. However, for people who, you're right, they're probably not going to suck it down and then give me their compost. Right. Um, so meaning like, you know, if they're walking down the road afterwards, heading towards the beach or something like that, then, you know. Yeah, I mean, we can just, just suggest that people do the right thing with it. The good news is when they do get to Pine Point Beach, they have the sun, sun belly things, and if their compost cup ends up there, which it probably will, it will compost and not just sit in a landfill forever. I know we're kind of going down a rabbit hole here of <laughs> conversation, but I hope that answers your question. Otherwise, I'm planning to have minimal trash generation, and I've already thought of that too. Like if I give a muffin and they don't need a bag, I'm not going to give a bag. It's kind of like just a, a napkin and go, because God knows we have enough trash. Okay. I don't know if the board has any other questions for the applicant. I have a question. Um, is that have the so my, my only concerns with this just deals with traffic mm -hmm. because Pine Point is such a busy road uh, near the first house as it turns off and people trying to maybe jump traffic or just trying to go through if someone's crossing the street that could be a significant issue especially with a crosswalk or a light um, uh, with the spaces across the street do you know how long those neighbors have lived there they lived there for a long time I think a long time, and I, like I said, they just don't spend summers here, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that's important or relevant at this point, mm -hmm. but um, I have been in this house renovating and living for the past four months, and the traffic is really minimal, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Going down Jasper, even though there's a fairly moderate-sized development, I'm amazed at how relatively calm and quiet it is around there at this point. I understand in the summer that will not always be the case, but um, again, with the pre pre-beach hours and the minimal traffic that I've already seen on Jasper Street, Street it seems promising that it's not going to be mm -hmm. over-congested and or a hazard. Okay. I understand your, uh, your thought, too, about crossing between the three spots in the house. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking early morning hours. That's going to be relatively non-chaotic sure. and safe, I'm hoping. And if, if that were to create a safety issue, I think we could address that and or not offer the off across the street parking. That would be my first line of defense to make sure people aren't walking in front of traffic. Sure, sure. And is your, uh, you mentioned earlier about just sort of longevity of this, that is your general intention. Uh, you mentioned it was uh, for, for your kids in the house, uh, your daughter and son to work on, work on the business. Two years, you were saying? Like a year or two years and just kind of see how it goes? Or is it just sort of the expectation that you're going to try it out this summer and maybe next summer? Next summer's not likely, because yeah. I have other projects I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this summer, giving it the four months, June, July, August, September, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be enough mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah, just sort of like a one, almost even like a one-time thing. To, as far as like, you know, you won't be really expecting it to last one year. I think there might be a demand for it next year, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of basing this on another example of something I've seen uh, in Hawaii where my daughter spends half her year. And it's just the same kind of shack concept. And it's very cool. And it may be appealing to, for me to do this again next year. But it's 50-50 at this point. Sure. Okay. All the parking spaces you have to pull in. Except for the, the so in front of the white truck, there's that front spot and then in front of the other. Yeah, but, but the four in front of the building and the three across the street, you have to pull in, which means everybody that parks there is going to have to back out on the street. Yeah. Correct. I don't want that at all. If they back in, it's real easy to pull out, though. True. <laughs> Who's right. going to be out there telling them to back in? Before I think we get into the board discussing all the criteria and the information that we've received tonight, Board has any more questions for the applicant? I'm just going to open it up to the public. And, and that's that. Close it. I'm going to open it up to the
the public if there's anyone who'd like to speak tonight. Okay. Did we get any phone calls or emails or anything, Brian? Can I address that Ed concern? So where the white truck is, if I don't know, Brian, if you could pull the screen down let's, a little bit. Let's wait. Let's oh. close. I'm, I'm going to come up close okay. over here right now. Oh. <laughs> and um, so then at this point, what the board's going to do is we're going to go through the criteria and discuss them. And um, if you want to have a seat, this is now the point where so we I'm, will. So I'm wrapping I can wrap this all up? Yeah. Yep. No yep. microphone? Now we're going to talk. Yeah. So turn it off. If we have any we'll specific set. questions, mm -hmm. we'll uh, pull up. Thank you. So first, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. Mr. Bork, do you want to start this evening? Uh, I don't see any impact here at all. I, I really like the idea of using compostable uh, cups you know, and offering incentives to people for people who bring their own mm -hmm. reusables. Uh, and, and I think that's a wonderful idea, which will keep uh, trash to a minimum. And of course, coffee itself can be composted. <laughs> um, I agree with David, and also that the um, process of creating the cold brew coffee and the muffins isn't uh, abnormal to any kind of normal operation of a building in this area. Everybody does those sort of actions, so it's nothing new or different that could potentially <coughs> toxic or um, affect any sort of water supply nearby. Yeah, I, I think everything's already been said that I would, I would say. I think it seems like you've got a plan for addressing the trash issue and, and um, nothing else, just really not anything else of waste or, or concerns that I'm worried about. I think her answer is uh, quite adequate. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, I think you've addressed this issue well, and we've talked about recyclable materials and what you're going to be cooking, and it's not going to be much more than what would be done at home before. Um, so all in favor of A being met. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Uh, I'll start by saying that based on the transa projected transaction counts and the willingness to limit hours uh, to avoid heavy traffic times during the peak times of the year, and this is just a, a part-time hobby kind of business for, uh, for these children, um, and the incentive for people who bike in, bicycle in, uh, I think that uh, all those things will uh, limit the potential problems for parking. Uh, there's, in my opinion, there's an adequate space here to cover the projected traffic, uh, the customer counts. Um, <clears throat> I think utilizing the parking in front, from my from my perspective, I think utilizing the parking at the house and directly in front of the house is really the. Um, I say from a from a safety standpoint, you're both real true viable options for parking. Um, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable trying to utilize the residents across the street only because we don't know what their situation is. They could just up and go for any sort of family event or something like that. I, understanding that they've been there for many years, um, but the. Seeing the tra seeing Pine Point Road right there, and the potential for any kind of traffic crossing the street, encouraging a lot of people to go there, bike and walk and drive. Um, I'm just having a hard time. So 
so the grasping. Um, this. I'm actually, this is, I'm going to have to stop you. This is actually the time where we discuss it. Oh. And um, yeah. I know it seems like no, he's addressing okay. you. Um, okay. but, sorry, this is actually sorry, the yeah, this part. Is, it's our, our yeah. conversation. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, the, my, my issue is just the, the, the safety of, of sort of pedestrians or on the street, um, even if it's just sort of coming and going. If they are coming and going, someone potentially cautious on the street might not see someone, especially if you're backing out. Um, that's just my, my, my major concern with, with this one. Um, so I, I, I kind of, you know, I see your concern, but I don't think that it's any, I don't, I don't really see a potential problem for this being any, anything in excess of what you would normally experience and I think that the, if I understand it correctly, Brian, can you throw, uh, just chime in? You said uh, two, two spaces is the minimum requirement for the size? For the single family dwelling. For the single, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about the parking situation or vehicular traffic, and I think the incentive to, to bike in and things like that are all good. I, I'm fine with this. I'm not. Uh, you brought up a good point about the pedestrian uh, uh, traffic crossing the road there. I think that's a that's a big problem, and cars backing out onto the street is that's that to me is unacceptable. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like yep. to add to my Thank comments. You. I see a lot of potential space there to put additional parking lots, uh, parking spaces in. All the grassy area on Pine Point as well as on uh, Jasper could be filled in with gravel, whatever, you know, some kind of paving to add additional parking if needed. Hmm. Uh, in addition to that, nobody has mentioned the, uh, the potential use of overflow into the tennis court parking lot. I haven't I talked yet. I just don't. You, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's not fine. No, I would. No, I would like you to. I would love you to comment. Um, I think you're touching I, on again, a again. I just really don't see a problem here at all. Okay. And I'm and I'm relating that to the projected transaction house. That's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the applicant's willingness to limit uh, sales hours of operation, you know, in order to control traffic. Because again, this is just a hobby business right. for the kids. They're a year two at the most. So that, that's just to add to my comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, as most of the board knows, and I should disclose, I do live on Pine Point Road. So um, I do have some concerns about this B in regards to the unsafe vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Um, you know, I watch people constantly do really scary U-turns because they drive past Ken's all the time. And I foresee some sort of issues here in regards to people just coming and going very quickly and turning into the development on the other side when they maybe see that there's a coffee shop there now. Um, I see people walking up from Bailey's Resort, but now they're walking up and they're crossing the street without a crosswalk. Um, I think we keep talking about beach traffic, but Bailey's is also within walking distance. Um, I know when I'm on vacation, I love to go take a walk for coffee. Um, this is at the end of a very new, big residential neighborhood, which there is a bus stop at the end of that street. I don't know if this is going to be operating during school hours or not, but school does start before September. Um, so I think in kind of leaning in there with Mr. Hebert, um, I personally feel that we've not met the criteria for B. Um, all in favor of B being met. circle back, but I do play tennis at those courts and they do fill up pretty quickly um, just to kind of give the board a little more information. And um, I, I definitely see people parking there, especially once they learn the coffee shop is there. Well, I can just park at the tennis courts next time because it's less, it's easier to come and go. Madam Chair? Yeah. Just a real quick on the um, on the tennis court issue. Yeah. And in general, and Mr. Longstaff mentioned this earlier as well, um, it's you're not allowed to use town property for um, 
for a service that's not designed for. So if you go into the town prop, the, the town tennis court, into that parking lot, you'd have to be there for the tennis court. So there really isn't an option to do that because it would be, I mean, amongst the whole other legal issues, it'd be sort of an unfair advantage of the town providing public parking for a business. And then that's sort of a slippery slope there. Yep, and we did have Pine Point for us last month who somewhat indicated that when the church was not available, they would just park at the town parking lot too. So it's kind of like a pattern, and I don't know if you can see that. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems for which would be substantially different from those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. As far as police and fire, is that what we're talking about here? Yes. I don't really see there any issues here at all. You know, the type of cooking involved here is not hazardous in any way. You know, it doesn't involve any kind of cooking appliance. It's a, probably most likely an electric oven, I would assume. You know, there's gas in a residential, uh, you can use a residential setup uh, for cooking these kind of baked goods. It's a simple license from the state. So uh, there's no, I don't see any safety hazard here at all. No, I agree. I mean, the act performed in the home or preparing for this isn't any different from what's being done in any other house in that neighborhood. So this is, uh, to me, this is a non issue. I would agree. I don't know. I kind of look at this uh, as a traffic safety issue. Uh, it certainly, I mean, once you have a traffic safety issue, you've got to, the police are going to be down there all the time. That's one of my concerns. It's a residential neighborhood um, with young families. I do know that there's like a bunch of homes for sale, so there's people coming and going within those neighborhoods. Um, my concern is there might be some phone calls to the police with regards to people just illegally parking and you know people think oh well I'm just running in real quick for a coffee so I'll just park here um, which could be pretty dangerous um, especially being right on the corner there um, so all in favor of C being met Against. Against. Four to one. Four to one. Nobody heard you say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, okay, I'll start uh, by saying that uh, the applicant is willing to fill in gravel as needed so as not to cause any problems with the drain systems. Yeah, and, and similar to above from my perspective, this is really a non-issue. Um, you're not, she's not producing uh, industrial level or, or super commercial levels of product that's going to uh, you know, result in any kind of sedimentation or erosion. So I, I, there's no issue here. I, I don't have an issue with that. Yeah, I agree. I don't see any, any impact in that regard at all. I also agree. I mean, it's, it's the same as they currently have not going to be any additional. Right, I agree. The uses that you have proposed tonight would not have any sort of change to the property or the water supplies. So all in favor of D being met? E, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Well, again, substitute the word shed for cottage, okay? And it's really off of Jasper, which is not really visible that much at all from Pine Point Road, which is the main road. I just don't see where there's any problem here with the you know, visual impact. And the, the willingness of the applicant to put in a nice landscape plan, you know, I, I think that will fit in very well with the neighborhood being asked that in the neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> I have no, I have no um, 
reservations about uh, visual impact, uh, physical size, um, or even proximity uh, to the other structures or the density of development. Um, again, my, my only concern is the intensity of the use um, and wishing nothing but success for this. Um, I, I think that with that comes the risk of just more traffic, which leads to my concerns from Part B of the application, which is not okay. maybe not sufficient parking. Um, so that's again, that's that's my concern throughout this entire application: is the intensity of use, the increased level of parking, people crossing the street, um, and just sort of the hazards that come with that. So I think, um, and piggybacking on those comments. You know, I, I kind of don't see where there's going to be an increase in, well, or dramatic increase in traffic flow. I think there's going to be just some that are going to go off to, um, I, yeah, I just, I don't think I have a problem with this, this particular one. Um. Not mistake. In the last meeting, we approved uh, an appeal for the business across the street, 240, the restaurant. This isn't going to be any different than a restaurant, so it's it's compatible as far as I'm concerned. I respectfully disagree, Mr. Blaze. <laughs> I think the intensity of use is going to change the existing uses to the neighborhood substantially. I think, you know, you compare to Pine Point, but that's a restaurant that's been operating and running there full force for as long as I've lived in Scarborough, um, 13, 14 years. Um, and so, I mean, you have this, you have this house in the corner of a residential neighborhood, a small little residential neighborhood, which suddenly got expanded into a very large development, um, which is a large residential neighborhood. Um, the intensity of use that this neighborhood has already experienced over the last 10 years has increased with this huge development, and now we have someone at the end of the development that wants to increase the people coming into, turning into their road constantly all the time. I think it's going to be a big change to the intensity of use. All in favor of E being met. that it is not located in the shoreland zone. All in favor? I can verify that. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. All in favor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's obvious what the use produced. She has, yeah, she yeah. has yeah. the deed. There. Yeah. Uh, the applicant has provided the deed, so all in favor of G being met. That's five. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with the conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. Uh, yes. Uh, she stated that she has the ability to correct financially any changes that, that we could impose on her potentially. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that one either. No. I think that's fine. I don't think there's much. Right, the applicant has represented that, and, our, and she has also explained that she already owns and operates other similar businesses. All in favor of H being met. Aye, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, okay, I'll start with this again. Uh, again, with the flexibility on the hours in order to keep traffic counts down and impact, uh, negative impacts on traffic down, uh, I think that uh, you know, that would mitigate any concerns you know, with potential negative impact on the neighborhood. Uh, I think that's a very important point. This is a hobby business. It's not really even anything more than that. It's just a way of being able to offer uh, the applicant's children, teenage children, the opportunity to learn how to run a business. That's it, uh, for a short period of time. 
I just don't see any problem at all whatsoever with negative impact in the neighborhood. Um, I'll say compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, and in the neighborhood, including sort of Bailey's, Pine Point, the areas around there. Um, this isn't anything so really different than what's going on there already. It's just adding to it. Um, uh, and I appreciate the applicant's willingness to adjust the hours to sort of try to mitigate the sort of um, early, late morning, rush hour traffic going to the beach. Um, I think that's great. Um, but, but again, I'm tied back to the, the issue of just traffic on this particular road, um, understanding the growth from the late 80s to the late 90s to now um, is significantly different. So I, I don't feel like, uh, like there's any incompatibility here. And well, I, I appreciate the, the statements too about the changes in the neighborhood and the, it, you know, over the decades. Um, I, I also feel like we, ha we haven't really talked about it all, about the past uses of this property being used as a, a studio or, or um, uh, we, had, we had an art studio and we had a Christmas shop, um, which are very similar uses to what's being requested here with, you know, further long hours, but longer hours than projected, but um, you know, May 1st, October 31st being in here, you know, we had, we had one in 88, or in 87, one in 98. Um, so there's, there's been past use of this building as a, for a home occupation and, and for, um, you know, a shop. And uh, I, so I kind of feel like it's, it's staying consistent to its history as well as, as, uh, you know, not being a any kind of incompatibility to the neighborhood. Um, I know I talked before about the restaurant across the street, but that's not really compatible in, in this situation because this place is going to be open up in the morning and the restaurants open up probably in the afternoon and evening, so. But, uh, to go with with what she says and I don't have any hang up with it. Okay. I don't really I don't really know how the hours, you know, changing from seven to noon or like that would really affect it too much if we were trying to, you know, minimize the impact to people. I don't know if the hours would really change that. Um, you know, Ms. Torrance commented on the other businesses that were run there in the past. I think one of my things here is there's a lot of different things going on here. One of the biggest things is past uses were a little bit different where I just think of takeout as a lot more traffic and a lot more come and go very quickly, which would be a little bit more different than people sitting down at Pine Point Grill or people walking into a store and looking at art and things like that, where this is where she is somewhat represented. It's like takeout where it's come and go fairly quickly, which I wouldn't think would be compatible with the use of the neighborhood with having cars coming and going that quickly. Um, all in favor? Yes. I'm sorry. Before we vote. Yep, yep. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Absolutely. Um, so in, just in regard to this and kind of <coughs> tying along what you were saying, Melinda, um, that as, and Brian, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, as, as a board, uh, applications come and different boards may vote different ways on each application. Like the, the, the historical precedence for a lot of this, you know, doesn't always have to come into account, um, nor are we forced to have it like come into account. Um, with just with regard to, you know, the an understanding that there were two um, uh, home occupation permits that approved one back in 80, uh, 98 and then 87 or 88, something like that. Um, and uh, those, a lot of, especially the late 80s and the late, the, the, the sort of expansion and the expanded developments that occurred down at Pine Point over the last 15, 20 years hadn't really started yet, nor as like new residential developments in that area. They were starting to maybe in 98 once, you know, once the, um, once a lot, a lot of that was, had been going on, but still hasn't really been developed like we've seen today since 2008 the last 10 years 
of sort of development and expansion and people moving in and things like that and just the increase in the density of traffic. Again, I, I mean, that's, that's my only concern, but. So one, one, of my, one of my things about that, just to, you don't mind me responding to that, yeah, is please. that, you know, this property, I presume the 1998 uh, appeal probably ran right through to when um, when it transferred to um, looks like looks like you you bought it Lee in in uh, December of last 18? year 18 yeah so you've only owned it for really less than a year six months or so so in other words if the current owner was you know, granted you know it would still be well I, well I understand that might wouldn't be a coffee component to it and things like that um, but the art studio piece of it um, if, if the previous owner still owned it it would be it would be fine we wouldn't be having this conversation at all um, because that that would keep going that that other appeal would just keep running through and so that's that's the only reason I really find this relevant is that you know we're talking about a six month or eight month difference in ownership that is what's forced this issue today um, and you might you know you the, the applicant might still be coming before us looking to adapt and, and adjust that you know but um, but at least for the art studio um, I think, you know, that was kind of the same use that, that would have been allowed six months ago. I, I'd like to add a comment, too. Uh, at the last meeting, we approved uh, some changes to a restaurant directly across the street, which added, um, I believe, uh, four, four top tables for, for food service. Is this correct? Uh, five. Five? So that's 20 people, okay? Uh, additional traffic now, all right? And we didn't have any of these concerns. The traffic was already there. Those pets were already well, there, and they were already serving out there. And I understand, not okay. And, but just to, just to add to that, yeah. uh, traffic has its flows. You know, different mm -hmm. times of the day, traffic is different, okay? And in the summertime, it's primarily, the, the peak is, the, is during, the warmest time of the day is typically from noon to about four or five o'clock when people are going to the beach. This business will not be operating during those hours. I'm sure that you know these kids are want they want to go to the beach too. Yeah. All right. So this is this is just a temporary hobby business. This is not a serious business long term that's got to make a lot of money in order to survive. That's not what we're talking about here. I just, uh, I fail to see a problem with traffic flows. I'm having a real difficult time with that. You know, early in the morning, it's, it's, the other places aren't even open. Right. It's just a constant flow of beach traffic starting at 7.30 starting at or 8.00. Uh, constant flow of beach traffic yeah, comes High Point Road in the morning. It's late. And, well, uh, what time do people typically go to the beach? 7.30 in the morning? Later. It just depends. Yeah. Um, Go sometime. It just depends. <laughs> and, so, you know, just to, to, to point on what Ms. Torrens was talking about, yeah, if the other owner was still living there, they'd be able to have a, an art studio, which is a different business than what is being proposed tonight. But the last time anyone actually asked permission in front of the town to operate a business at this address was 1998. And so... Um, that's the difference that I'm trying to point out here is that I think Mr. Hebert touched on that. It's a very different time and place when it was well, I, granted I completely understand that. that point, but again, I'll just simply say this is not the same kind of business as the other businesses on that street. Mm -hmm. This is much, much different. This is right. like a pool Because it's a stand. residential neighborhood. This is more like a pool stand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think of it that way. Yep. Well, like, this, is, this is a different kind of a business? Yes. Totally in, in, different. In what way? Okay, I've been in the food service business. I know what I'm talking about, okay? And I'm not, I don't want to try to use that as leverage, okay? 
Okay, but this is what I do. I, I consult. Okay, I know a lot about this. I know a lot about traffic flows and what happens at different times of the day and what an impacts this is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know about these things. You know, what, what's being proposed here uh, is counter cyclical to all the other activities that are going on on Pond Point Road. And I don't think some of the other members of the board see that. That's my concern. Um, so that's, that's I, all I have to say. I have one more point, too, just to make. You live at this address. This is your neighborhood. And you have children that will be at this address. And I cannot imagine that you would have bought a property in a neighborhood that you wanted to live in solely for this purpose to run this business for three months for the summer. So I think that, you know, the, the interest that the applicant has is still in maintaining her residential neighborhood. And, I, and, the, and the safety and welfare of that neighborhood, I think, is still going to be of primary import to her. Um, so I, I really, I think we need to kind of weigh this. Um, the other question I would have is that, you know, I believe we, we have the authority as a board to set a condition on this where we might be able to approve this for one season. And um, if, if that's the case, you know, we may want to toss that idea around that's and really see what the effect that has on Renewable. it. Renewable. Can I add something, Madam Chair? Please. Um, with regard to this and, and respect to the, um, the application that was last month, I wasn't here, but um, that that is an established business with a parking lot that was designed for traffic flow. This is on the side of it's on the street off of the off of the main street, and um, so that I, I don't see that I can't make that comparison. Um, and uh, darn, I just missed the last thought I was going to try to do. Um, sorry. Well, and I appreciate Mr. Bork's contributions, but this is actually a home occupation, and this is not a business. And exactly. what concerns me is that this is being presented from a business perspective from someone who runs a business similar to this. And um, I don't see this not running for more than one year. I see it being very busy. I see, um, I, and so um, I see it becoming somewhat more incompatible as if it was to continue to operate. And um, I used the word hobby business earlier for a purpose. It is, it is a hobby. It's not a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's, when we say home business, that's not really a business. Okay. The primary purpose purpose of this residence is some residence. It's where people live year round. Okay? And it's something that uh, your proposal is to let it be used early in the morning before there's a lot of other activity going on for very, very limited focus use. One baked good, one beverage, and then artwork. That's it. That's going to have very little impact on. It's, it's not the same. It's, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It's not the same as the restaurant across the street, which is a business. Well, this is an application for a home <laughs> occupation or profession, but then um, uh, this is an application for a home occupation or profession, but the understanding that I've sort of relayed tonight was this is not actually their primary occupation or primary profession, and that's just kind of something that I'm putting out there when it comes to a home occupation. I think in my experience, I've been on the board for a couple of years now and the home op home occupation applications that we've seen is someone who has a particular expertise and they want to operate specifically out of that to do this. This is a little bit different where they have a business and they're trying to maybe take some of that business and try to operate it out of their residence on Pine Point Road. Um, so I believe we're still on I, if that is correct. Um, yeah, so can we voted on I. We did not vote on I yet. Um, so all in favor of I being met. Those against. Okay, so sometimes we vote as a whole over the home occupation standards, I sort of feel like tonight we're going to need to go through them one by one. I don't know if anyone has any feedback on that. Um, I feel like we are going to need to go through them individually. And so we are. 
Bring in the home occupation standards? Yes. Yeah, we've got to go through yep. those. So the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal <coughs> building or within a building accessory thereto. Yes. I agree. It's finished. No. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah, I think the standards are met. Yeah. Okay. So the occupation or profession shall be carried wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Um, this one's a little gray to me just because the, the customers are actually going to be outside. Um, and so the business is, the actual transaction will be kind of happening with the people standing outside. And um, so I'm it's a little odd and off, but. Um, when you go to a, 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 a drive through window, of it, and of course. I know, but again, this is a residential neighborhood. Yeah. And so again, I think no, I know. What, part of the reason one but of the your point requirements is, is you know, this is by, a by residential. having the customer outside the building, you're saying it validates as a business? I think it has or a visual impact security? on the residential neighborhood when yeah. you're walking, when you're at your residential home and you're looking out your door and you see a line of people outside All the right, neighbor's well, house waiting for On the surface, a line of people, if the projected uh, transaction count per hour is somewhere in the range of 15, that's not a line of people. No. I, that's how, a, how much time does it take to serve a nice coffee? It takes about six seconds. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot of people. You know, we just, we're not talking about tremendous volumes here. Believe me. We're talking about a living standard. They could never make a living doing this. I mean, this is basically well, an exercise in teaching your kids. We're talking like about 50 more cars a day. That's a lot. Yeah, but it's straight out, out of a in and out, in and yeah. out of well, hold on. some of those are out of one residence. Walkers. And it's with incentives for the bicycles. Okay. So right now we're just talking about the principal building. And I was yeah. just saying that, you know, the transactions are going to be happening outside the building. That's all I was commenting on. But there's a requirement. Total area devoted to retail sales is limited to, to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm kind of wondering and I'm looking to the board to say, and this is part of the reason about a home, op home occupation is we don't want the neighborhood to be so visual, so impacted in so many aspects. Now there's traffic and now there's groups of people standing outside. I think the reason they want people inside the building is to decrease the impact of that. Uh, we, I think we did discuss the fact that there wouldn't be any tables outside or any other uh, artifacts of any kind, lawnmowers was the example of anything right. like that. So I think this definitely is not a problem. Okay. Everything is contained within the show. All in favor of one being met. Four against one. Two, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Obvious. Yeah, I agree. I think from the time frame of, of when it's going to operate at all, it's very incidental. Mm -hmm. okay. No problem with that. Yep, no, I agree. All in favor of two being that. Um, three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Uh, again, the applicant said that we would. We would Probably never happen, but it might occasionally. So I, I believe it's been done. I agree. I don't see any issue with this. I agree. I agree. I agree. You've represented that it's going to be your children, just your family there working. So all in favor of three being that? Four, the exterior signage shall be permitted in, accord, permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12. Um, that's pretty much regulated by the town. I don't really think we need to discuss that. I don't, I don't see any major issue to come up with that one. She's already made statements saying she would agree to comply with everything that was requested, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we've got no problem. Yep. She'll work with the town. Sign. All in favor of four being met? 
5, there will be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, or no other exterior indication of a home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. Uh, the applicant has agreed to uh, comply with those standards. I agree, so there's no issue here. You know, this is, this is really the only one that I actually question a little bit because it's going to be obvious that there's a business going on when the, when the windows open up. Yeah. But but I also don't feel that there's that it's uh, there's going to be a significant impact of that that such that um, I have to look at that. Can I look at that one well, again? So. I mean, I, st I still don't believe it's going to really detract from the residential character of the neighborhood. And I think that, you know, despite having some visual recognition of a business going on, I don't think it's going to detract. Um, I'm, I'm against it. I mean, it, this says there shall be no exterior display, no exterior stores, materials, no other exterior indication of a home occupation. That's are we talking to They're outside. The people are outside. There's something going on outside. Is this is this a sign question? No, this, is, this no. is number, no, this number, is number five. five. I don't have the book in front of me. No, because I have your book. You have the book. I know. <laughs> so let me read it again. No, it's all right. I can't no. hear too well. No, so there's, uh, there target. shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, or no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. Right. And this shall, prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. So. Yeah. If I, if I can add that real quick, I mean, the, the structure is already there. So right. it's not like right. it's going to be a big surprise when it pops up. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, I think this kind of circles around to the questions or the concerns I had when we were going under number one. Um, this is this is going to be a big indication that there is a home occupation because as soon as you have one customer, they're going to be standing outside. Um, and this is a variation from the residential character of the neighborhood and the principal building. Um, so all in favor of five being May met. I make one more? Absolutely. Yep. One more quick oh, comment. Please. I just want to acknowledge that the the, they're, despite her notifying all of her neighbors and s really seeking out whether anybody had a concern about this, none of them have shown up. None of them have written letters into us. Yep. And so the entire neighborhood appears to be okay with this. And I, I feel like that's something we, we need to I would go on the record. I would like to ask you a question. Um, did, with the people that you, t the letter, did they tell them about tonight's meeting? Um, you know, we don't know who received those letters. We don't know if it was anyone, you know, beyond it. We know the abutters were informed, but we really, <coughs> we have no idea. And so for me, personally, I can't rely on that. We have no idea who letters were given to, whose home, when they were given, and things like that. Um, does anyone have anything else on number five? All in favor of five being met. Any against? Three to two. Yeah. Um, six, no nuisance shall be generated, included, but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, or glare. Well, I don't see any impact here at all. I don't see it generating nuisance or noise. Again, like I said, my, my issue is just with traffic flow um, going in and out of the premise. So I don't see any issues with nuisance or noise. And likewise, I feel that there's no, no issues there. We don't really know at this point whether there's going to be any nuisance or not. Because, I mean, if it's going to be going on outside, you don't know what kind of a nuisance it's going to generate. So. Right, I think the uses that she's proposing to do sure. in regards to coffee and muffins and things like that won't create any sort of nuisance in regards right. to these issues. 
Um, and that's where I think they have traffic and all that under a different one. Um, so all in favor of six being met. Seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Well, we sort of talked about this one <laughs> earlier as we went through the uh, criteria, the first set of criteria. Uh, and uh, again, I just don't really see traffic counts that are sufficient to cause any disruption whatsoever because all of this will be takeout. There's no facility for on-site dining, whether inside or outside. This is strictly takeout. Transaction, they want. But do you feel there will be an increase? No, no, the, to cause, again, you gotta read the whole thing, which will cause Hazardous condition or what? Unsafe condition? What does it say? The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Again, I don't see a problem with creating a hazard or disrupting the neighborhood at all. Think of this your kids operating a lemonade stand. It's the same thing. Is that a disruption? Is that a hazard? I don't think so. So my uh, my thought, and and I agree that it's not a disruption by any means to the neighborhood. Uh, again, my issue pertains with the location's proximity to Pine Point Road, uh, having two or three cars parked in there. Just three cars parked there at once. If two cars are trying to back out onto Jasper Street and someone is making a left-hand turn or right-hand turn, uh, paying attention to the traffic, and they go into there, there's a chance for a collision. Um, and I know it's, that's the, un the unlikely event. However, um, just again, from a traffic standpoint, I, that's where I, uh, I'm, again, having an issue. All right, so where do I start with this one? <laughs> um, several different things here. You know, I, I think, first of all, there's not going to be any additional traffic driven to this site that would not already be passing by Pine Point, on Pine Point Road anyway. I don't see where anybody is going to look at this particular shack coffee stand is as a destination that they're going to go out of their way and, and increase traffic flow to this destination. So I, you know, I'm sure your coffee is wonderful, I'm sure your muffins are spectacular, but I don't think anybody is going to drive down Pine Point Road on purpose in the peak of summer season just to go to pick up a muffin and a coffee. So I don't see where there's going to be additional traffic on Pine Point Road. There will be a slight increase in traffic on Jasper Street, but I think that, that this is where the location on Jasper Street and at that corner of Pine Point and Jasper actually is a benefit in that it is at the, it's at the entrance to a neighborhood. It's not deep in, we're not, we're not saying, hey, drive all the way down Jasper Street and, and get your coffee or, uh, you know, look at our paintings, whatever. We're, we're saying, you know what, we're right here. If you want to stop, stop grab something, go. Um, and, I, you know, I, you piggyback on my lemonade stand comment earlier, it's just, I, you know, it, 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 this is what this is. This is a project. And it's, um, I think it's a temporary thing. I think we're, we're well, I, well, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we do have to go through this <coughs> exercise and it is very important work that we're doing trying to go through this in, in a very practical way. I think we're speculating in large part on what the traffic concerns are really going to be without really having, you know, I, I can tell you from my experience of driving around down in that area at all in the summertime, there's a lot of chaos. And people have to be vigilant about where they're pulling out. I mean, when you're in a, a beach parking lot or whether you're um, driving on any one of those side streets, it, it's... I don't think that it takes any any additional vigilance to be to maintain safe vehicular traffic 
at this particular location for this purpose. That's my opinion. And I think that I think I got out all my points. Um, <coughs> I got a problem with traffic going up. I mean it's it's the backing ba backing out that gets me. You know, if you could figure out a way of getting the cars in there and pulling them out straight out, I don't think I would have a hang. And then in closing the So if there was business, a circular driveway or something. There was a like circular that? driveway somehow, I don't know. But otherwise there's a traffic hazard out there. Um, yeah, I think that I, I personally feel like the turning onto Jasper creates more of a safety issue where if it was right on Pine Point, there's really no question of people kind of turning off or pulling off the side of the road. Again, I've lived on Pine Point Road for five years now up the street, and so kind of my experience and what my concern is what I see and I foresee or what I'm concerned and what I've seen in the past is people kind of slamming on their brakes, turning into Jasper, or in the alternative, turning into the the residential neighborhood across the street. I see people getting their coffee and then maybe deciding, I'm gonna go all the way through Jasper instead now, or I'm gonna turn around at the residential neighbor who's two away from me who didn't get a notice about this meeting. Um, you know, I mean, there are a lot of criteria under here for traffic and generation, and I feel like the board is kind of playing lightly on the fact of a lemonade stand. This is not a lemonade stand. This is someone who operates a business and is now looking to operate another business out of a residential neighborhood. And um, between the parking lot next door, you're gonna have people parking there and then walking on the street. I feel like people are probably gonna be parking up right into your front lawn. Um, I, there's really no criteria about, that's the next one. Okay. I don't see no parking signs there, do you? We can't park on the corner, I don't believe. What are the rules for parking? Can we park on the corner of the street? Some of the street, some of the stop sign. No, you can't park on the corner of the street. Within so many feet of the stop sign. I'm not sure how many feet it is in Scarborough, but I know what it was in South Portland. Yeah. Right. But there, um, there is no stop sign on that side of the road. It's on the other side of the road. Right. And so, like, to kind of counter what Ms. Torrance was saying, I think you, you're right. I think she's going to get not consistent. I think you're going to get tourists who are going to be more unsafe and not knowing the area and things like that. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything else to say on number seven. All in, all in favor of seven being met. Two and against. Eight, in addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customer the home occupation may attract during peak hours. So what, what did we actually establish was the amount of parking? We said that she has two spots there, and then it looks like there's... There's a long driveway, which is an obvious right there. There's seven spots total. Now, is the seven spots including across the street? Because I do not feel that you can include parking at someone else's residence as part of your home occupation. Those, those did include the three across the street. Um, and I, I don't know if there's discretion on that, Mr. Longstaff. Well, what was, but what I was don't not know. included, though, was the, again, you can't see it, but just to the right of that car parked in front of the, the shed. Mm -hmm. There's a long driveway, which will hold two cars, which would be, if I'm not mistaken, that's where the residents would park right. their cars. Right, so they'll park there, and yeah. then there'll be maybe three spots there for people to pull in. Yeah. And then otherwise, they're just parking. Right, the and then there's a big grassy area, which could easily become additional parking, too. So, where that truck is, the white Where truck that is. truck is, if, if everybody parked horizontally, would we be having this conversation of the concern of parking if they were able to back out and pull out onto Jasper Street? going forward. I'm curious, just from the board's perspective. Yeah, I, I still think it's an issue because, I mean, first of all, there's a sidewalk there, so they can't expand parking because it's because it's a residential neighborhood. I mean, that's, that's no, your I mean, driveway. They would park onto the lawn, like on that lawn, that side lawn there, right there, going so out this way. Parking this yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah. So, so if, that back, were, if, back if that were gravel and, and somebody 
or were you in not? I mean, it doesn't have to be, but. That would have to be the, unfortunately, that would have to be the only parking there, because in order to get clearance for a car back and out, you would have to go back a ways, not mm -hmm. that you would cut in front of the stand, and then turn out, so you'd be backing up to the building in the lower right-hand corner. Right, and I think you get a little, you can't just start adding more spaces either because then you kind of go back to the um, exterior indication of a home occupation. It, it's going to be pretty clearly a home occupation if you turn your whole front yard into a parking lot. Does anyone else have anything else to say on eight? All in favor of eight being met. I was saying against as we were going to vote. I went right to okay. against. Sorry. I just, no. Don't confuse me because I'm don't keeping it. <laughs> 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 Let's see. We just voted on, right? Uh, yeah. Off-street parking for the employees. talking about the customers here. We're no, the, about the second part is the vehicle. Um, yeah. But she's already explained it. I mean, she's got the driveway and all sorts of lawn there. She's addressed that, I think, satisfactorily. I apologize. I thought it was in reference to customers and... No, it is. Um, it is, yeah. There's a, the oh. last the number of users of cust oh, or customers okay. of the home occupation. Okay, number nine, the home occupation may utilize no more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided for the purpose of this calculation. Unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. The unfinished attic or basement spaces. And C, spaces in an accessory building totaling no more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. Oh, yes, we discussed that. I agree, we discussed that. She's met the requirement. I believe that requirement's been met. Yeah, we've discussed that. All in favor of nine being met. Okay, ten, the home occupation may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. A, the total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building. Why don't we do, we're going to break this down. So first we're going to talk about A. Bork, do you have any comments on the total area devoted to the retail space is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building? Okay, it, it definitely is within the allowed uh, criteria. I would agree. Um, I don't see an issue with this. I don't see an issue with this. I see an issue with it. Must be fully enclosed within a building. It's not. Yeah, I mean, she, she's got to take the walls of the building up to actually be able to operate, um, to actually be able to conduct business. The walls technically have to come down. Yeah, it's just open. It's opening a window, essentially. Okay. Window, yeah. It's, it's, you know, and it's the, all of the activity is actually taking place within the perimeter of the, the actual structure. You know, there's just basically passing the product out to the customer. I don't, I don't see where that's a, a conflict with that particular standard. My, uh, my opinion is um, this is, uh, I don't see an issue with this, whether it's the argument of everything is inside the enclosed structure or that you have to walk up to the structure. Uh, I think this splitting too fine of a hair, and um, I don't see uh, any issue with this. I've already commented okay. on Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I struggle with this one a little bit, again, because I think home occupations are, we're looking for people who are typically in a different zone, such as in a residential zone. The reason the town comes up with these criteria is they really want to have the least impact on, on the zone. And um, 
So when I look at fully enclosed, my understanding is they want the business inside the business and they want all the business transacted within the building. Um, that's just my personal interpretation of the ordinance. So all in favor of 10A being met. That's three and against two. So 10B is the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises and seafood caught or harvested off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by one employee permitted under paragraph three above. Uh, clearly has been met. I agree. It's been met. Absolutely. They agree. Yep. She's clarified that everything will be produced and done on the property. I agree. So all in favor of 10 B being met. Um, 11 is a fisherman, lobsterman, or shellfish harvester need to obtain home occupation approval except to engage in retail sales. Allowed under paragraph 9B. I think this establishment that's not applicable. Not and 12 is not applicable either. So I don't know if anyone has any general comments, questions, or concerns, or motions that they would like to propose at this time. I'd like to just make one comment. Yes. I think your idea is a fantastic idea. It really, really is. Um, and your kids could probably get an awful lot out of it. However, I think you should have brought your kids here tonight so that they could have understood some of the issues have to be considered in, in allowing this to happen. I'm trying to imagine that. I know it's, um, That's just a comment. No, I should pick a piggyback on that because I was thinking the very same thing. I think, you know, you, you had a, a secondary learning experience for the children that would have been very beneficial to them to see how this kind of process works. Mm -hmm and to have experienced what it's really like to get a business started. You know, you, doing the work and the labor in the moment is, is one part of it, but the planning and the responsibility for it is another very, very important learning experience, and it would have been, it would have been nice to have them here. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, comment on that, on those two comments. Uh, I think it would, uh, you really have to look at this in terms of what's appropriate for young ones to learn and at what mm -hmm. stage, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the time for them to be learning lessons about how a zoning board of appeal operates. You know, I'm doing a residential variance to run a, you know, a small business in a home. It's not, okay? I think later on, you know, once they have a lot more experience, and yes, they have to experience those kinds of things too because they're gonna have to deal with planning boards and zoning issues mm -hmm. and all kinds of things, uh, as the applicant has. I raised her six, businesses. <laughs> so it's one baby step at a time. So I must respectfully disagree. I think it's appropriate mm -hmm. that they're not exposed to this stuff. What they need to learn is how do you deal with customers? That's what they need to learn. Mm -hmm. you know, can we make a few bucks out of it? Well, That's I what think. They need to learn. Well, I mean, and there's, there's a reason that this town of Scarborough has a zoning board of appeals, and it is our job to kind of go through these criteria, and I, I feel a personal responsibility to look out for the people who are not abutters. I personally live in that neighborhood, and my children ride their bike. I have major concerns. I think it's a great idea. I have major concerns, and I've, I've, I'm worried about my friends who live down there, and them going to the tennis courts, and people who are from out of state who just don't really care, pulling out of those parking spots and zipping around and things like that. That is a very small little residential neighborhood. And um, especially with houses coming and going and going for sale and things like that, I really want to look out for the residents who live there because it's a residential neighborhood. And this is why the town has all these criteria for us to go to. And that's why traffic and safety and all these things are over that. Um, you know, Melinda had proposed doing a year you know, a temporary year. I think that's great. I think the police are going to be called about about parking and about traffic and about things like that, or people turning around in their driveway. Because I don't know the last time that our 
studio was open. Maybe you know. I have no idea. I, I don't. But the, as long as I was there, nothing's been operated out of there. And so it, there's been nothing going on there. So this is it's going to be some of, more of a change, I think, than maybe we've kind of represented. Um, and the neighborhood's already been under a lot of change with traffic Just and stuff like on that. that. Yep. If you don't mind. We're talking about limited uh, hours of operation. Uh, and I think, too, that uh, the point was made earlier that it's only going to be the cars that are already coming down these streets. It's not going to be a destination business. Right. Okay. And the amount of the amount of customers per hour okay, are very, very small compared to what regular businesses run. Okay. A business business, okay, not a small four hundred square foot total space in a home. Okay. You know, a restaurant typically will serve, you know, 500 customers a day. You know, that's a lot. And it, but it tends to come bunched into, you know, you know periods of time where it's very heavy, they're full, okay? Lines waiting to get in. And then there's slower time. So you can't say, all right, 500, you know, just what's the average hourly? No, because there's some hours where you're going to be 125 customers. You know, it, this is nothing compared to the other businesses that are already operating on the street. Okay, yeah, she's operating off of Jasper, and I yeah, think that's important I just really to... Think, yeah, I just really think, I don't want to believe this point too, too much, but this is really small potatoes compared to what's already there. There's nothing there. There's been no businesses I mean, running there, the and there's been no traffic there yeah. at all. There's nowhere to get traffic from Route 1 down to the beach, so this is the only place that people are going to be stopping to get, to get coffee it, if available. People, if people were parking on Pine Point Road, Instead of turning down Jasper, would you have an issue? Would it be as big? Would it? Would you feel as strong? If this wasn't on a corner, I would. That probably wouldn't bother me as much. I think you're on the corner of a very young residential neighborhood with kids, and that's a bus stop there. Um, I just think you get a lot of flow, and there's also town park. I mean, not, there's not only tennis courts there. There's also a basketball court and swings. So, I mean, you need to think about the neighborhoods and that this is literally the only access that that whole development has is to go by this new shop there for the kids in the morning who want to go to the tennis court or the basketball court and things like that. And so, you know, as a mother with two little kids who ride their bikes around the neighborhood, that is pretty much all that's on my mind at this point is the, the impact and the change and the safety that will happen to this, this little corner here. And on that note, yes, Mr. Hebert. Um, and I'm not going to belabor this anymore. My point's been clearly, clearly stated. Um, but if this wasn't on this particular corner of Pine Point, Pine Point Road, um, I would have significantly less issue with this. Uh, again, as someone who, uh, I'm, my experience with with this and studying traffic flows is part of my uh, part of my occupation. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a potential danger there, and uh, always trying to mitigate those and try to keep those away as best as possible. Um, so yeah, I have no further comments. Thank you. And that's what I appreciate about this board is we have a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds, mm -hmm. which I think was super helpful tonight, mm -hmm. um, which was good. Um, do I have a motion? I'll move to approve appeal number 2659 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? And those against? I'm really sorry. That was denied. make a, a could I'm just, motion just to curious if yeah. that was ever considered. Could we motion to approve for one year? No, I, I think you got three people who pretty much already voted it down and I think without really appreciate everyone's help and feedback. I think this was a really tough application. I think it's a really great idea and it's a great concept. I think it's, it's a tough location.
on the tables until next week. <laughs> okay. That wasn't because of the absolute business because of the business okay. 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 So hopefully by next week, we'll have a new member for the meeting next month. I don't know if we'll see you again, Mr. Blaze. I'm sure we will. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone has any other com comments, questions, concerns. Yeah. Uh, before Ms. Kellis leaves, I, I do want to make a comment that she does have the right to come back before the board with a different proposal, with an amended proposal. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay. Yeah. No, you, well, you have to go through a process of coming back again with something different, with modifications amended. Well, I would like Brian to comment on that, because my understanding is we just denied that, and now she isn't. No, I mean, if she... There would be a new appeal. If, if, if it's the same appeal, we can't hear it for a year. Anyway. If she comes back with a different plan, yeah, different plan, it would have to be a different plan. Do you think different might plan. address some of the concerns of the board? I mean, quite, quite frankly, I think most of the concern was over the traffic. Right. If she hired a traffic engineer to do a traffic study, if she designed a parking lot that would allow cars to turn and drive out of that, I mean, if she came back with something, I'm not saying that's what she's going to do. I'm just saying those would be ch different changes in my mind. Mm -hmm. I agree. That would be up to the board. It's not my call. I would agree. Or if her model changed, you know, what its product was. Yeah. There wasn't yeah. going to be a... Another possibility uh, would be to... I'm just throwing an idea out. Okay? Eliminate the food and beverage products yeah. so it's just strictly an art stand. Much lower traffic flows. Right. That. that would be another possibility. So... And, but it's up to you, you know, to figure out is this something you want to pursue or not, and then come back with a, a you know a different plan that you think the board might be more open to. And if I can just add on to that real quick, um, we're we're not by any means designers or telling you what what you have to do in order to you know we're not going to give you X Y Z and say this is what you um, have to provide for us. You know if you have the door facing this way rather than this way. Um, these are just suggestions, and uh, if you were to uh, reevaluate or your application, come back with something different, focusing on some of the, as was stated, the um, sort of uh, hot points of the discussion time with traffic. Um, you know, if there was a, a way to, whether if it's a traffic study or finding some proof from a traffic engineer or something like that, proving that there would be no significant sort of increase or risk, uh, I think that would mitigate a lot of concerns. You have to decide whether it's worth your time to go through all that expense <laughs> and so forth to yeah. do versus changing the concept. And that's why I threw out the, you know, the suggestion of consider scaling back. And no, I think you have a great idea, yeah. but okay, you have to be able to come back and convince the board on all these criteria, we have to say yes on everything, you know, in order for this thing to get approved. I think you understand where the board's coming from right now, from hearing our comments. Okay. Mr. Longstaff? Uh, under Section 5 of the Ordinance uh, 5C4, if the Board of Appeals shall deny an appeal or application, a second appeal or application of a similar nature for the same property may not be brought before the Board within one year of the date of denial of the first appeal or application unless in opinion of the majority of the board, substantial new evidence can be brought before the board or unless the board finds in its sole and exclusive judgment that an error or mistake of law or misunderstanding in fact has been made. Yeah. So, so there's some interpretation. It does. And so I mean you've got some feedback tonight, but it's all very, you know, it's all how it's interpreted, I think, as you saw tonight. Based around a certain topic. <laughs> Second. 